Jim McAllister. I'm an 8th Dan martial artist. I uh, hold the rank of professor. I'm coming on shortly to Liquid Bullet Productions and you'll be able to see um, a resume of what I do. If you come in with a sword, what I'd have to be prepared for is that when he comes down, is that it's got a blade. So I can't block it as I would in an unarmed situation like this, because it would just off. So from there, I'd come over from there, and then smash, smack, and throw it up back, bam, into there. Okay, so it would be hitting it from here, the back of it there, strike him down, taking his hand out of action, strike him down, hitting across, hitting him. Anyone who wants to do that. Don't let them have So, you would stand it more like if you're playing pool, you've got two bad losers. Maybe you've got the pool cue here, it comes up with a roundhouse attack again, into there, strike into there, over to there, bam, into there. On the foot, down to there, I like turning the foot. Alright. So you're coming in, <laughs> strike into there, bang into there, bang into there, crack into there, back into there, ah! and back. So if, because lots of people had those there, it would work against the sword as well, to a point. It's not as good as the sword, to a point at the time. Right, so from there, when he comes in, downward strike, yeah, so you go into there, into there. Right, so you can see what I've done, just trapped it into there. Right, so he comes in. In, trap, bang, to there. All right, so that's just one way to do it. Another way, is it comes in again, from here, it's one, comes over there, and strikes into there, and into there. It's knowing, I always say, it's like the what if situation, that he wasn't in the prepared place that we practice for, you need to be able to adapt. So you come in, one, down to there, striking into there. Quite vicious or you can strike into there. Or if he runs away, <laughs> come round, it's called a thief catcher. Oh! Down, right? Or if he runs away further, you come from here, to there. And that's how you get him in. That's why they're called the thief catchers. Now, the crati we're going to do today is Fudoshin, which is like an old Okinawan type of crati, which is probably not at all useful in competitions. Um, a lot of what we base is obviously katas, but I won't do them today. We do some Ippon Kumite, which is attacks, and some Rin Rokuwaza, known as Korean charges. So I'll, I'll just limit it to one or two. I would tell the person what attack to come in with, which is obviously premeditated, and then I will do it slowly, and I will do one more of combat. So come with a downward strike, step in, one, two, three, four. Okay. And now we're going to come in combat speed. A different, a different defense from the same attack, a simplistic one. Okay, this is just a very simple one. Come in, one, in there, bam, into there, bam, into there. Yeah, comes in. One, two, and back. Come in full speed. One, two, ah, back. Same attack, different defense. One, two, three. Back. One, two, three. Well, in fact, cool. This time it's just a simplistic one from here. It comes in again. One. When I said earlier on about pressure points, these are vital points. This one generally works. <laughs> right, it comes in. One, two, ah, yeah. In the event, we can punch in. You pop from here, bang, to here, up from here, back. 
can't get high with my hip. Right, comes in. <laughs> Here, into there, down to the ground, hit down, straight down, ready to go. Michael Venlock, he was a Korean giant. I make the attack this time, you just stay in the middle. Right, simple one from there, hit me down, I'll be back again. Here, in, boom, boom, back. Here, kick, boom, boom. And here, one, two, three. And boom, boom, back. One, two, three, back. And from here, in, back. Yeah. Okay, this time we're going to drop in. Here, slightly different. I haven't got the lag in this one here. Okay. Right. Right. okay, so with the kickboxing section of mine, obviously we do sparring because that's what brought me into the kickboxing. I thought the sparring was a little bit more realistic, a bit more flowing than some of the karate. Um, but I tried to put into the discipline side. My old instructor, Professor Lawrence, said my giri, his obligation, is to make kickboxing a martial art because he was very traditionalist. Whereas for me, you know, I wanted it to be the same. So we bow, we have a grading system. We do all the same aspects of protocol that we do in karate. Um, the only difference is mainly is that we're doing a lot of flowing movements. So the combinations that we're going to do, the jab crosses and things, are no different than what most schools do, just that I do it slightly different um, because I've put a little bit more emphasis on the technique. I thank Master Cam for that because he's um, analytical and has helped me on that road. Whereas John Longstreet helped me with distance, different people have had all their different aspects. So we're going to just kind of boy, please. Okay, I'm so just trying to show you, just without going through the whole nine yards. Uh, when we're doing a jab, rather than here, I do the jab similar to what I do in open situations. Here, whole thing is right down there. Just do, I just do one combination, just jab cross, one cross, just to show now it's got to still have this essence of power, but flow on the upside. All right, so from here, it's just going to come from there, one, two, three, and it's about the hips as we explained earlier on. All right, so from here, it's one, two, three, four. Okay, so it goes. Is in coming in back. Right. Here, you can see that you jab cross here, jab cross here, back, jab cross here, back, jab cross. Right, one other kick we do a lot more in kickboxing is off the front leg, it's around. Right, so again, it's in back. Right, jab. Jab, kick, jab, cross, back. From here, kick, one, two, back from there. So some of my perfections. 
this here what I put together to simulate striking the person's eye. From here, shoom, back to the eye. So shoom, back and grab. Right, in, shoom, back. From here, in, and grab. From there, and grab. One, two, head back, knee. Various combinations on that one. Good old Bob. We use Bob for everything. One, two, four gym punches. One little drill that I quite like from here. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So from here, it comes in with. traditional makawara which is used in all lock and dojos and that means rice winding from here so again I use the same principles as from here back hash 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 But in martial arts, <coughs> we do meditation. I can't. <laughs> I, it's just, I'll never be able to do it. I do cutters and we come across it. You know, one, two, People say that they are techniques against making opponents, they call it punkai. Um, it's not been my top of my list, however, different catchers are demanding with your memory bank and it uh, makes you flow. However, my meditation is the last but not least. Um, my meditation is sometimes getting lost out here. Sometimes you come out here all day long, you can get them in, other days you can't get them in. So it's both demanding and it gives you some sort of feeling of meditation. Um, lots of um, cells are all different types of knives, proper purpose built ones. I'm under the impression that you should be able to throw any knife. So I'm gonna take a chance now. Right. So we have, <laughs> and this one here is a heavy purpose built knife. Okay then. It's a heavy knife. These ones here are like better than any old thing. I mean, you see, they're not the best condition. But from here, right, if you're in short range from here, you haven't got the luxury, you just go like. Alright, right, so you're doing close from here, up from there, back into there. Now, the other way, I know there's an assassin, right this way, from here, in, okay, back from there. principle of using the weapons is, is all the same no matter what weapon you've got in your hand generally the strikes the movements the techniques the, the hip movement is the most important in all of them now that gives you the power for whatever attack you're going to do with whatever weapon the principles are all exactly the same which is amazing you know, it was a great realization for me and I was studying all the weapons and realized that that characteristic was down the middle of every one of them 
So, you know, as you say, you, if you can train with a Joe and suddenly you hurt yourself and you've got a walking stick and some bloke wants to come along and have a go at an invalid wandering up the street, you've got your Joe already and he, he gets a serious surprise, you know. As well as uh, the Yawara bow that Jim just spoke to you about. Uh, although it's a stick, you can use a biro, you can use a pencil. Anything is an expedient weapon for the same thing and it will attack the same areas with devastating effect. So, you know, just a ball, ball point which you're allowed to carry, you can virtually kill somebody with it if you know how. All right, so from here, these are called nunchukus. Um, not to be confused with the Ninja Turtle nunchucks, or the American, what they call them, they're nunchukus. It means my dental section. They were used for stripping bamboo, they were used for clamping horses, they were used for hitting soya beans, they wasn't rice flowers, rice flowers had longer arms. They are different shaped. I've been to the Okinawan Martial Art Museum and they will show you the ones that are shaped differently. They was their least preferred weapon in Okinawa. <coughs> and again, the myth was Okinawan farmers were the fighters. No. The um, samurai, or the pechi, which was in Okinawa, when they was not needed, they took other professions over, such as farming, um, teaching, and all different things. So the ones that went to work on the farm were already trained. So when they see weapons <coughs> around they could use, they were trained. They weren't farmers that just picked up a nunchuku. They were samurai or petty with the experience of, of battle. So it's a sort of semi-myth. So these movements here, <coughs> I'll just show you a couple, They've become very flamboyant, Bruce Lee was fantastic. Danny and Sandra is here, one back from here, back from here, back from here, back from here, back from here. Lots of different movements so we can use with them from there, comes over, up. Right, and then from. So there, and we use these in small cutters that we can demonstrate come over, just to show our dexterity. Practically speaking, they're great attacking because as I said, you can use these as expedient weapons, a pair of shoes, laces you use around, but the main thing is you're swinging them around. Yeah. But you must also have control of them. Right. So you come across from there, strike out, back, back, yeah. They can be used from here, they can also be used from there, back, come around, sorry, over to there, up. Now we're going to use this defensively, <coughs> we'll just take one of the attacks. They generally say the roundhouse attack because it's probably the most common, but it's quite nice. So it comes in from here, one, two, round the neck, strangle. Yeah. Alright, one, two, round it, round to the arm, and they're going, yup, it's just break your neck. Because they're all weapon, they're, and that's, they're not a showpiece, but they can be. If you're teaching children, you know, <coughs> you'd like to teach them how to have dexterity, have fun, show the parents, but realistically, they're not this one. So if you were coming in with a, a backward one, shall we say, from here, again, up to there. Yeah! And back, and once you've done this, come over here. Right, come in, then, from here, you can also do it this way. Ah! You fight the one. Fighting is business. You know, I'm a pacifist. And, and I'm polite, so I don't really like people thinking about fighting and doing this, but if you have to, it's like sort of hole, and those are things hard to hold, you really fight and you don't. Okay, right, so that's the little chicken. And this here is called Joe. <coughs> this is often uh, described as being the poor man's sword. Probably been around forever, you know, the female of a dinosaur or something, whichever. It's legend said it was brought around when a fighter fought Miyamoto Mikashi and he had a longer bow, he was defeated, had a vision of a shorter uh, weapon and then fought Miyamoto Mikashi and beat him. Um, but so most of the sort of thoughts are that Miyamoto Mikashi never got beaten. However, they're quite good. So traditionally, you stand from here and you would hold it and you would go on, you just back, back out. And that's just used to be dueling with somebody. If you had a sword, you would stand some sort of chance with it. 
fighting in the back. These, these are called tomfa. Now, tomfas were used for rice grinding. If you think, if you, if you was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and you run out of, of just say they was a farm tool, right? because most of them were. This was for grinding rice. Right, so the grinding rice. They were also used for hanging things up. The American police call them kind of thing. Come there now, right? And they do an adaption of them. So these things here can be used for punching, striking. From here, you can come down from there, the lock here, you can strike, you can strike back. So all the different movements that you can use with them. So on this one here, I'll just demonstrate one that comes in with that downward strike again. So from here, it comes in one, two, three, four, Alright, so you, you block those angles, that slides down, hit to the head, strike round from here, hit to the body, and then return and back, and then you guard position. Okay, so you use one, two, three. And they, they help out your flexibility and coordination, but it will take you long to show those. But each of the weapon has a cat on. There's different sizes. We have the short one, which is the Tanto. Then we have the Wakazaki, right? Then the Katana, and then the Hitachi. This one is just a little bit shorter than the normal one, because I'm just a little bit shorter than the normal one. So the idea of this is not called a samurai sword, it's called a Katana. So with this here, again, a certain protocol, you release it, you strike. You, you, can, you come across, and then from there you call Chiburi, Flick the blood off, over to here, back into there, wait until them all clear, and put it back. So if, just stand there for me. <coughs> so the main thing on this one is that it's the drawing of the sword. There. Okay, come in. One to there, one to there, up, back. This here is called the pack cecil, which literally means little axe. Now this was a kitchen tool, and it was converted or devised by a woman Indonesian whose brother was um, a blacksmith, so he, he made it more sharp. This here is the wood is poison, so as well as everything else, you've got the poison dying in. These were more of an assassin's weapon than they was a, a defense weapon because <coughs> they are easier to attack with them. I I up <laughs> so again, similar principle, in a cut, stab, 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 punch, come over there, cut down, strike down, strike down, and pull back. In cut, bam, 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 punch, in up there, cut down from there, in, in, cut down from there. Alright? Excellent. Okay, alright? Yep. <laughs>